I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry to have lied to you guys. And now I'm going to make this video to make it up to you. Make sure you watch it when you give that a call. All right, very good. I just had to make a video about this one. It's Angelo's hot dog phone from Angelo's Hot Dogs. Angelo sent this phone and it made me realize that I had lied to my students. Oh my God, that breaks my heart. Don't worry, I told them the truth and I think you'll understand how it is that I lied to them once we jump into this repair. So Angelo sent this phone as part of our 50% off data recovery for their holiday special. I love recovering data during the holidays. So there's still time if you wanna send your phone in to give somebody the gift of data, go hit up our website and you can read all about it. So Angelo said, go ahead and make a video about this phone. And we did, Angelo is hoping for photos, videos, contacts, my family would be very grateful. All right, Angelo, we'll see what we can do. And he says that it's a black screen, phone does not power up at all, suspected water damage. So let's jump right in like we always do. I've opened it up. Oh, the guilt, I'm feeling the guilt. Oh God, the guilt. Woo. All right, so let's see. First thing I'm gonna do is put it on the DC power supply. All right, we've got it connected. This phone is an 11 Pro Max. Now let's prompt it to boot. It looks like it's booting. When we see that kind of boot up current, this phone looks like it is indeed booting. So therefore it should be making an image on the display. Let's go ahead and plug in, not this screen, but let's plug in our known good screen. All right, with the screen on, now let's prompt it to boot again. And look, it's different. With a screen on, this phone hangs at 100 milliamps. What's up with that? It looks like it can boot up, except not when I have this screen plugged in. Look at that, it's just chilling out at 100 milliamps. Let's go ahead and diode mode the connector where we're plugging in the screen and see if we can come up with some kind of a problem that's making this phone not boot when a screen is attached. and focus in right here on the screen connector. Let me flip it around. There, we we're gonna focus right in on that connector where we plug in the screen. Now let's get out the multimeter and do some diode mode and compare to ZXW. All right, let's see if the on-screen multimeter is gonna work while we jump in and diode mode that connector. So diode mode, red probe on ground, and let's compare it to ZXW. So red probe on ground, we're gonna take that first pin and see if we can shove this big, thick multimeter lead in there. All right, we're getting 0.3 and ZXW says it's supposed to be 0.29, that's a match. Let's go ahead and move up that connector. 0.3, 0.3, that's a match. Blue means not connected, so that's gonna measure as OL or over limit. And then let's keep moving up. 0 0.7, 0 0.7, that's a match. All right, let's keep moving up. Where are we now? We've done four. Let's scroll down a little bit. Fifth one, we're getting 0.3. Next, we're getting a match, 0.5, match. And then here's where we have a problem. We're getting 1.05 in diode mode compared to ZXW, which says 0.647 in diode mode. So 0.647 is what this line is supposed to be. And we're seeing a lot 
higher resistance to ground. So something's up, but it's not quite a full-blown open line. But let's investigate what is this line and why is it giving us too much resistance to ground? So here is the problem line. Let's just zoom in on ZXW and we can see the name of this line. It's pin 16 and its name is PP3VO display. So power for the display. And if we click it and see where does it go, it goes to this nearby local capacitor. That's not gonna cause increased resistance to ground because a capacitor is not an inline component. And then it gets to this filter, FL5783. So what I'm gonna do is check to see if the increased resistance is coming from some damage to the filter. Typically a filter is just gonna explode and create an open line, but maybe this filter has just had current rushing through that damaged it, but didn't quite blow it up. So let's check the resistance to ground on both sides of the filter. It should be the same and it should be 0.647. Let's go check. All right, let's go for diode mode right on both sides of the filter. Here he is. So on one side, instead of 0.6, we're getting that high number, 1.05. And on the other side of the filter, look at that, there's our 0.6. So that tells us that this filter is indeed sizzled up inside enough to create that high resistance to ground. So the fix is going to be to replace that filter, but I'm more curious about why. How did it come to be this way? So think about that while I go ahead and swap out this filter. I love for you guys to see how very tiny this stuff is. In person, it's really, really fun to see how small it is. Here's a penny, and I'm gonna drop a filter on top of the penny. Look at that. This filter is about the size of good old Abe's eye, but guess what? This filter is actually way too big. Check it out. I'm gonna keep it on my tweezers and show you what this one would look like if I were to install it in the missing spot. Look at that, it's too big. So we have to get one that's even smaller. I'm gonna harvest one from this iPhone 11. All right, this should do the trick. All right, let's get this guy soldered right into place. Okay, that looks good. Now, we don't know that he's really soldered on both pads firmly until we do diode mode in the connector. So let's go check that out. 
So hopefully our diode mode has been restored to the normal 0.6 instead of what it was, which was 0.1. Hey, there we go, 0.59, that's a match. So we've got our new filter in place, which has brought back the normal diode mode reading. Let's see if that's enough to actually bring back image and to get this phone to boot with a screen attached. All right, that's connected. Let's go ahead and try to prompt to boot with this screen on and see what happens. Prompt to boot. Come on, Angelo's phone. Come on, Angelo's hot dogs. Hey, there we go. I love to see that Apple logo. And let's see if it can boot up so that we can get Angela's data. This is such great news. I love being able to, to do these data recoveries, but I'm but I'm really feeling guilty about what made this happen in the first place because what I think happened, I think, hey, there, there it is, I love that. I love seeing these data phones come back on for data recovery, but I'm feeling pretty guilty because I feel like I lied to my students about saying, ah, it's fine, iPhone screens, you know, they don't really get damaged in a way that they go on to actually hurt the phone. They might not work, but they're not gonna actually kill a phone. Uh, I'm not so sure about Angelo's screen because if you think about it, the only way that we could have had that filter damage is if there was a short in the screen. So maybe it was just a little drop of water that evaporated and this screen is fine now, but I feel like there's a really good chance that Angelo's screen with water damage this is a board killing screen. I think it might be. In which case, I'm so sorry. I'm very sorry, class. We had a great week. We had students from Switzerland, from the federal government, from Honeywell, from a couple of repair shops around. And they straight up asked me, Jessa, do bad screens kill phones? And I said, you know, I really haven't seen that happen. But it can happen, so you do have to be careful. And we always tell you to use known good parts, but you know, it's hard when these are expensive screens, you just wanna know if it works or not. Sometimes if the screen doesn't work, that screen can indeed kill your phone. So know that and Angelo, we are not gonna put your screen back on, but we will recover your data. So it's gonna be good news. You're gonna be getting all that back. And everybody else, yes, yes, I'm changing my answer. Yes, it's true. Bad screens can indeed kill the board right and that's what happened here all right i hope you guys right, learned it's time something for me to confess i lied to these guys let's go tell them so class do you guys remember a couple of days ago when i was telling you who was it that asked it was it was you no i'm sorry I remember you asking me, is there ever a time where you're afraid to plug a screen in or a part into a phone when the part has been water damaged? And I was like, do you remember what did I say? Uh, I think you said no. Yeah, I did say no. I was hoping just now that you might say that I said usually not, but uh, I do think I said, I said, nah, don't worry about it. It's an iPhone. It's fine. It's not going to happen. Maybe a MacBook or iPad. But yeah, I, I, I lied to you guys, I lied to you guys. Turns out that um, water damage in Angelo the hot dog phone actually caused damage to the board. Yeah, so there was a short in the screen and because we had electricity going to ground in the screen, that actually pulled current through a filter and killed the filter in the board. So. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm very, sorry very sorry to have lied to you guys. And now I'm going to make this video to make it up to you. Make sure you watch it when you get back home.